Hello. Hi. My name is Phyllis Y. Whitley. If you have been spiritually victimized or traumatized, welcome to Spiritology Live, where I bring my number one Amazon bestseller book to life. Each episode will be a raw, spiritual, metaphysical, holistic space of consciousness for self-healing as you learn how to break your religious shackles so you can master and manifest your promised land within today. Let's go. Hi, everybody. Yes, I had went on and on and on last episode dealing with changing your church clothing. And I'm going to make this a part two because I really didn't finish. So, first of all, if you haven't listened to my old episode, please go ahead. It's a method to my madness. And you're going to get dessert. My podcast is about spiritual pain, shepherd slaughtering, toxic relationships. It's about everything. It's really how you take all of that and you move forward into your promised land. Because we've all been there. Choose your poison. I am here to tell you the truth. I expose the lies and tell you the truth. Because the truth of it, you're supposed to be in your promised land, not for yourself. Yes, God said I should give you, reward those who diligently seek him. But do you understand? To diligently seek him, you must have a relationship with him. I'm not talking about go to the building. I'm not talking about go in the building, bang on the door, stay there for hours. They ain't got nothing to do with God. I'm sorry. Yes, he do say you come together in fellowship. You come together in fellowship. Bring your self wishes to church. Everybody come in. And everybody is a different church. And they come to the table and you got more of you. And you can put down on the table and lay down on the table things and revelations and songs to help uplift each other. Because yes, it is going to be a time when you feel like the wilderness came and knocked at your door. You can have your promised land and still go through something. And this is where you come together in fellowship. But what happened when the pandemic came? So many people learned that they wasn't going to die when they couldn't get to church that Sunday. And so that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the church clothing. We're talking about those religious shackles going back, 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 back. That's here today. People say, I don't understand why this person act like this. I just don't see why the politicians act like this. I don't see what, why the uh, entertainers are crazy. I don't understand this. Why did that person just turn around and shoot everybody? Why, why, why? It's a seed out there. They're not telling you that. And unfortunately, people... Sh- don't look to the church and they should be able to go to the church with, with questions answered and nobody wants to answer you. Your pastor don't want to answer you. Your priest don't want to answer you. Your evangelist don't want to answer you. Your deacon don't know. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? And then people don't even know where to go find the prophet. So with that being said, what do church clothing have to do? It's everything that's on the outside. The religious sectors at the time of Jesus, they did everything for a show. They prayed long hours for a show. They did everything. Jesus didn't do anything for a show. Jesus just went about his father business. You know what that is? He literally walked in the rim of the spirit. His miracles, everything. He hung up and hanged out in the marketplace. He celebrated in places. You know when he turned the water into wine? He literally with his disciples was training them to go forth and do more than he could do. To go forth and feed his sheep. You know what that is? What do you think when he said feed my sheep? What do you think he's saying feed them? Is he saying, come to the building and I'm standing up here as a pastor of an evangelist with a Bible in my hand and I'm quoting scriptures and you never even picked up the Bible and opened it? The only time you opened the Bible is because it failed and you had to take some of your so-called notes. You make believe you, you know, you write in notes and you don't even write. You script it, script it, script it. That's the only time your Bible probably opened. Don't even know God. I don't need to know God. Some of you go and you go and you have a pastor Or should I say a priest? And you go in there, you light a candle and the priest say something, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, and you go, you go run it out. And you know what you do? You start thinking, I did my due diligence. God seen it. Then when the 
priests come in town, people are falling over and cracking up. I gotta touch him. And I got that's not Jesus. That's not God. You want to touch something on the outside. Then you wonder why everybody's leaving the Christian. I'm talking to so-called Christians. People are leaving. People don't want to hear that. How are you going to sit up there and you telling people I'm a Christian? Now, you know you're not supposed to be perfect. People look at you when times come, when wilderness come knocking at your door. They looking to see even your family. You know, how can you handle this? This is supposed to be a Christian. That's why the next generation of your kids is like, I won't have nothing to do with it. I don't want to have nothing to do with your God. Everything was on the outside, on the outside, your flower plant, the, the farm of God, it may look beautiful. But if you pull some of that food, the vegetables and the fruit that they grow and it's nasty and it tastes nasty, he ain't, he's not soaring it and watering it right. The same with you, your dirt. What do you do with soil and dirt? You feed it. Hello? They didn't tell you that, did they? You feed your spiritualness, your invisibleness. The other side of you that nobody wants to talk about because the church is scared, scared of spirit world. People are walking around and they feel, oh my God. You know what they feel? Spiritual. They associate spiritual with witches and warlocks and psychics. I mean, how can you say you know who God is and you don't even know when you connect with God, he's going to do so many, many miracles. And we call a miracle. He said, hey, this is who I am. Do you understand? That's just something for you to say. Am I really? Do I really know God? Am I really washing, wash up in him the way I supposed to? By spirit and truth? Because you know why? Because he said, I am a spirit. And you only can watch of him in spirit and truth. He didn't say in body. You here on this earth, because of back then, you know, what happened with Adam and Eve. So we have this uniform and this suit that people crack up over when it expire. And they go, and I have nothing against you going to the graveyard. But you know what? They're not telling you. People fall in a casket. They turn around and they go to the graveyard. If you want to go ahead and do that, they're not there. If they pull over that over that casket after somebody gone, it is nothing there. Fossils and bones and whatever. That's probably why they had to move Elvis. They just why well, you got I just gotta get. You wonder why your kids are worshiping everybody. Remember Elvis? They worship a rock star. They worship somebody on uh, entertainer. Some of them even wash, worship a politician. Believe me, they got one that they just, you know, I got to touch him. I got to, they, it's the power. It's the power. It's the money. The money. Don't blame money. Money's not bad. Certain weapons are not bad. Money can't get up and talk, nor can a gun. It's who is behind it. That makes it bad. Now that I gave you that revelation, why am I speaking about all the outside things? You know why? Because even in the church, they are blinding you. You can't even walk in the church no more because you say, oh God, I just need God. I just need God. And you go into the church and they look at you and say, what, you, what is she doing with them tight shorts on or those tight jeans on? They judge you from the outside. They talk religious. Be careful, ladies, when a man is talking all religious, all King James. God is only going to talk to you according to you and your word. If you ghetto, he's going to come to you and talk ghetto. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Miss P. Wait a minute, Miss P. No, no, no. Don't believe me. What do you think he's going to talk to you with? Don't let that man come up to you and start quoting the scriptures. And he can know the scriptures. There's nothing wrong with that. But you got to understand, is he talking to you religiously? Or spiritually. Be careful when those church when you go into a church, and I'm I'm giving you some of the details because people say, Well, where do I go to church? Where do I you know now is not even a brick and mortar, everything's turned to online. Some of the things that I'm telling you are revelations for you, keys that you can take with you when you change the channel or when you go online and you say, Ah, I gotta get a, a, a I gotta get a church. I need to feel the word, and there's nothing wrong with that. The word, the word is powerful. But I'm telling you, you want that word real quick? Open up your Bible. Start reading. Be careful when you go into a church and they only give you a Bible story. A Bible story and then they leave. 
some Bible stories are good because they're trying to get they trying to give you a image and then they're trying to give you a revelation behind that. But if they just giving you a Bible study story, excuse me, you better run. Be careful when they say, I don't believe in Jesus Christ. Some people say, OK, I read the Old Testament. I don't read the New Testament. OK, each is to each his own. Jesus was an example. He was the Messiah. He was the highest prophet. He was the healer. He came to let you know this is what you're supposed to do here on earth. You're supposed to set an example. Hmm. Be careful when that church believe that you you have to walk and live in poverty because it's a virtue. No, it's not. They cast lots on Jesus' role because it was very, very, very wealthy. And if you look at his disciples, I know he had a doctor. One of them was a fisherman. And I'm and do you understand? They literally had. You can't help anybody if you don't have. That's what God said you shall not want. He said, I give you the land of milk and honey. You know what that is? Abundant. God said your cup shall run it over. Your cup should not run over in stress. It should not run over in lack. It should not run over in sadness and loneliness. You understand? If this is happening to you, you need to turn it around because something is going on. You are not being fed correctly. Look for a church that is feeding your spirit, not your flesh. Well, how do I know he's he's trying to feed my flesh? Well, when he get up and every time he get up, he talk about a sin. You did this and you did that. I mean, yeah, you can turn around and illustrate something and you can say, hey, this is not good for you because of so-and-so. It's not good to feed the flesh. You have to feed the flesh, but it's not good to feed the flesh. The reason why you see people running rampant in addiction of any kind, whether that's food, whether that's drugs, whether that's alcohol, whether that's sex. So you don't want, you need somebody that's going to feed you. Because once you get fed spiritually, your spirit is in control. According to Galatians 5, 17, this is in the New King James Version, it says, For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. What is that saying? That is literally trying to tell you that you have a spirit and that you have a flesh and they fight against each other. That's why you do the things that you don't want to do. That's why when you go around and you sleeping with threesomes and foursomes, you just like, I really don't want to do that. I really don't want to do that. I really don't want to. No, I don't really want to puff. I don't want to puff. Wait a minute, wait, I can't help myself. I can't help myself. And this is for those who it, look at coffee drinkers. They don't tell you about that. How about the person uh, down in the next cubicle? Who tell you don't even come near me until I have my coffee. They serious. They serious. Now I'm not sitting up here talking about that's a sin. I'm just trying to tell you what are you feeding your body. Now coffee is good if you got the, the coffee that is not harmful to your body. And they they are finding out that they have some uh vegan coffee or something like that. I don't know nothing about that. But I used to do coffee and let me tell you something. If it's we talking about addiction. Hmm. It's people out there that drink wine. I mean, all of a sudden, you the biggest sinner because you drink wine at nighttime or you go out and you drink a, a, a wine or something. Don't you understand? It's just really addiction. It's the same as people that eat. You have to eat. But what happened when that gluttony spirit come in and say, hey, no, I want you to eat when you're sad. I want you to run and be a closet eater. And you just gain weight and gain weight and gain. You might not gain weight. Some people are skinny and they literally have a gluttony spirit and they go in the bathroom and throw it up. Do you understand you're feeding your flesh and you cannot survive? You cannot be strong until that spirit is intact and that spirit is fed. When that spirit is fed more than it is the flesh, you will turn around and you will find that you will have more discipline and more control over your flesh. So even though the pastor may be up there talking about you doing this, you're doing that, people are like, I, just, I, don't know. I can't control it. I don't know what to do. They don't tell you what's behind the story. 
You can sit up there and talk about somebody's sin all day, but are you coming and teaching them and showing them what they need to do to get their spirit together? It's not about who you was with last last week. It's about are you with God? Because if you learn how to cater and feed your spirit, a lot of that little stuff that you do on the side, God can control that. God will take care of that. You'll be like, oh, I, what is that? I don't know what that is. I don't do that. Because you will go about the father business. You don't have time for that. You won't have time to be running around 13 years old and wondering, who do I sleep with? You won't have time at, at 18 saying, I got to jump over or harm myself because he don't like me or he don't love me. You won't be in your 20s and 30s and you running around with Tom, Dick, and Harry and you got all these soul ties. You won't be running around at 40 and 50 and 60 and you putting on erotic stuff on your flesh because you want to attract someone and live back in your 20s because you were so busy having kids. Okay, that's raw. Yes, it's raw. But do you understand what I'm trying to say? You're supposed to be at 13 looking into your books and trying to figure out what college I'm going in or what specialization I'm going in because everybody's not college material, but you better specialize in something because the last time I heard, nobody ain't going to give you no money for free. When you 18, 20s or 25, when you in your 20s and you're a teenager, you you should be trying to specialize in something. You should be busy. You shouldn't be busy worrying about what with, with, uh, King Ron and all of them are doing. Who love me? That's why people, I don't love me. I want someone to love me. Do y'all notice that? Excuse me? Don't you think you need to love yourself? When you love yourself, you are actually telling the creator, I love your creation. And then you are self-care, self-love yourself. I had an episode about that with self-care, self-love. People don't even know how to turn around and buy their own self a, a, a flower. When I see a flower that look nice, I give it to myself. You understand what I'm saying? Because your job is to be in your promised land and help your family, your community. And it's going to go on. God will make room for your gift. I'm not talking about it. you just giving everybody, you paying the aunt bill, you paying the uncle bill. And you know, and you can't do anything if your family don't want to have nothing to do with you. I respect those that are in my family and they say, okay, good. So good. You wrote a book. Okay. Who cares? Okay. We don't really want to know about that. I respect the fact that they are not there where I'm at and that's all right. They are not celebrating me. So you better get around people that's going to celebrate you. Is some people spend years crying because the family don't like you, in-laws don't like you, and you spend constant trying to prove to them that I'm not what you think I am. You're trying to prove to your old teacher, I'm not who you think I am. You're trying to prove to the media, I'm not who you think. Stop proving to everybody. Stop proving to your parents that you're not who I think. That's the way they thought or they think if they're still alive and just say, okay, I'm going to bless you on your way, but let me tell you who I am. If you get into the word, you have realized that you are nobody else's opinion. Nobody else's theory or thought about you. You are who God said you are. And you really don't know what that is until you get into that word. So let's go ahead and ask ourselves: does it really matter what you're wearing on the outside? I mean, the outside needs to be watered, cleaned, fresh. You know what I'm saying? But did you have to ask yourself, what kind of signal are you getting? Are you giving out there? Be be careful with that, you know? But ladies, leave the woman alone if she's trying to find Jesus and she don't know she's coming into the church and she gets in the church and you mad at her because she literally look better than you do and you know she's going to get, you know, Thomas down, the Deacon Thomas, because Deacon Thomas is tired of you because you're going behind the back door sleeping with him anyway. He don't, he don't really want you. He's just lying to you. You get mad because you think the pastor's going to like the woman that's coming into church and he's putting too much time on her because he know that she needs the word. And you mad because somebody told you and lied that the pastor is your husband. OK, I know, I know. I want me to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone I because I'm going over time. But this is what I want you to do. 
I want you to ask yourself, what hypocritical spirit have you been harboring? Who told you you were nobody? Who told you this? I want you to ask yourself, what can you do to grow and develop your spirit? And then ask yourself this other question. Are the spiritual leaders in your life showing evidence of manifestation of a sovereignty spirit? Okay, that was a mouthful. You're going to know them by their fruits. You know what that means? They didn't tell you that. That's manifestation. A farmer have a field. You know what he's looking for? He's not looking for weed. He's looking for the fruit, the vegetables and all of this. That's manifestation. That's manifestation. You need to see it. You will know. You know them by the fruit. So don't let nobody come to you with a religious story. Choose your church wisely. Choose your spiritual leader wisely. And know that the next time somebody tell you, you ain't no good. Because you don't go to church. You tell them, I am the church. If you want more of me, hello. You can set up and contact me. And I will be more than happy to have a one-on-one queen consciousness consultation. And yes, I do actually have consultations with men too. Yes, I do. So with that being said, I thank you for coming into my space. I want you to share us on social media because I don't know who you know. I want you to never miss an opportunity to get one of my books. I have a couple books out there. You need some meditation? I got meditation books. Look at it. If you are a podcaster, I got a book on podcasting where you can just go ahead and keep your notes. What's new? Actually, I'm working on two books right now. And I'm not going to tell you what they are. But I will tell you that school is starting and you want to get the book Ask Jalen and you want everybody in your class to have that book. Tell your teachers, tell your friends. And literally, it's it's about stopping the bullying and befriending everybody. I want to leave this quote by Napoleon Hill with you. Our only limitations are those we set up in our own mind. All of those religious shackles are there. But guess what? It's in your mind. Amen. And remember, if loving yourself is right, you don't want to be wrong. <laughs>